Hey guys, welcome to Resenha Jiu Jitsu and today's video guys I decided to do something different. I took the holiday seasons to watch an instruction hour with, with Catherine and we decided to take the John Donner her back attack system and this instruction hour was really nice, I really like. As a black belt I know a lot of things, I knew as a lot of things by the back control but with this instruction hour I like a open mind for all the things and I decided to create this video here for what I like the most on the instructional and I decided to bring for you. So guys, the instructional have the more the eight hours uh, for John Donner her teach about uh, how, how to hold the back, how to get the torre position, how to uh, set up your hooks on the person. So I think it's really valuable for you. I really recommend that you watch it too and get on the BGG Fanatics. But guys, this video, I picked the most value position I learned in, in destructionals. I'm not gonna go over everything because like I said, it's more than eight hours of instructional. And here, how we can say this, I, I pick up what I'm most like, like I said, like I have a Kimura by the, the, the back, I have a how to trap the arm properly on the back. And also in two, how to just can hold the person's battery with your hooks. Sometimes the persons can like uh, get let go of your hooks so easy and have a one position there. What I really like, just like a few details for for you improving your hooks position. So guys, if you want to represent Jiu Jitsu on the streets, yes, you can go to rjujitsu.com and get the one shirt. If you get the new Creon Loyalty, that's the new release for this year here, you can see the Creon Loyalty on the back. Uh, be welcome to go there and support the channel. So guys, now let's go for what I most like on the John Donner her back attack system. All right guys, so finally here on the back and I'm gonna teach you what I most like on the John Donner her back attack system, all right? And let's start with the basic because the basics can like, uh, create a fundamental really good, all right? So when I learn Jiu Jitsu and Gi and No Gi, I'll always be taught to like, how to put my hooks in, never cross my feet and that's the basic, yes? But I have a problem there. I always want to take some, part of, some person's back. I always try to keep this leg here tight as possible to keep my hooks here and my opponents sometimes get out easier there. So if my opponent just pass there, it's going to be really easy for my opponent there. And that's right on the beginning of the instruction. And I think uh, if you really want to have a good back control, you have to pay attention more on this part of the instruction, all right? So I'm going to bring like here really quick for you what I learned. So he called this the, the repose mount. So when I have here my opponents on back, I have to change the configuration of my hooks to pin my opponents better, right? So the top leg, I will pose on my opponent's side, really close my opponent's hip. So my, uh, my big toe is a point inside of my opponent's hips and my heels points outside. And this leg here, I create pressure on my opponent down. So I want to actually like step up on my opponent's hip to keep like more pressure there. And this leg, I will put like a ballerina toe and I will bring up, I want to put my toes to the ceiling. And this really easy configuration of legs is so much harder for my opponents to get out of my hook. So if sometimes you get the back control and your opponent escape by the leg, try the rear post and mount. I promise it's going to change you everything. So if I go to the other side here, if I go to the other side, I have my Sit belt on, I go to the side, again, my toes go inside of my opponent's hip, I'm going to step on top of my opponent's thighs, close by my opponent's hips, my other leg, I will point my toes to the ceiling, and here I don't have any problem from my opponent's grab uh, for get like an ankle lock, and also it's going to be really hard for my opponent's step out of my leg, because here I will keep it way higher and way distance from my opponent's can move, right? All right, so after we learn how to control my opponents better with the repose amount, let's go here about what I learned to was the hand fight, right? So usually I learn how to do it this, I always control my opponent's wrists and I keep him fighting over here. And for me, this work really well for today. I still have a good control of my opponents. Of course, of, uh, of course, sometimes my opponent can escape there, but for me, I always was part of the game. But sometimes when I really want you and I really put in my effort to grab my opponents, I can hold there. But what did he teach how to do it? He teach how to hold on top of my opponent's hands. Yeah, so, so you see how I do the grip? I grab my thumb inside of my opponent's thumb and I hold 
above the knuckle line, right? So on top of the knuckle line, actually. So on jiu-jitsu is, is, uh, is, is illegal for you grab your opponent's fingers. But if you, you grab your opponent's palm, like I'm doing here, or as my, my opponent's fingers still free, it's totally allowed. And here, I do the same thing with the other hand. So this is now the, my new configuration for fight on back control. I stop to grab the wrist, and I grab now my opponent's knuckle lines. And here I have a really control of my opponent's uh, motion. All right, so save this because after now, after here, we're gonna use this a lot, all right? So guys, after I grab the knuckle lines, I'm gonna teach you the transition for the arms, for the hands fight. And pay attention right now because that probably is the most important for you can have a successful choke. All right, so guys, if you see here, I have my overhook and also to my underhook, all right? And I always gonna fall for the apply my choke from my underhook side. On gi, usually I go to the, my uh, overhook side for choke my opponent uh, better. Do a rear naked choke or do a bow and arrow or any other choke, I always go to my uh, overhook side. But for now, we always going for the underhook side, all right? And I'm gonna explain why after I teach you how the hands fight's going, okay? So, let's go over here. I control my opponent's hands, I'm oh, sorry. I control my opponent's knuckle lines, all right? What I'm gonna do? The hand I have on top, my overhook, I'm gonna push all the way down, okay? I want to grab this hand really low. Why am I doing this? Because I want you pass my opponent's front arm on top of my hand, right? So, holding my opponent on the arm, I want to slide my opponent's front arm on top of my own hand. So I grab it here, and I slide on top. What I'm gonna do? I'm gonna release the grip of my underhook side, and I'm gonna pass over my opponent's front arm. I will slide, and now I'm gonna grab this grip here. I don't know actually, do you know the name of this grip here, Catherine? No. <laughs> no? Nope. So let's look, let, let, let's say like it's the, the hope grip, right? Because it's basically like a, I hope, I, I hold like a hope and have a knot on the bottom. And then here I can like a, hold my opponent's hand really, really tight. And also too, I don't spend too much energy to grab this grip here. Actually, this grip here can do just with two fingers and be strong enough. But of course, let's use the four fingers for grab, all right? So let's go back here just for your presentation now because that's the most important part of the, all the instructional I feel like, all right? So I have the, the knuckle line grip. I will pass on top of my hand, let it go the grip and I will switch. Hold my opponent's forearm and here I grab my opponent's wrist, all right? So now my opponent have this hand free. Usually on Jiu-Jitsu, my opponent is gonna do two things with this hand or three things. My opponents are always going to defend the neck, or they're going to try to grab my hand to try to escape, or sometimes they're try going to break this grip here. All the situations I can have control of this hand, all right? So let's start with the first one. If my opponent defends itself, what am I going to do? My hands always go on top, all right? My hand cannot never be under my opponent's forearm or my opponent's hand. If my opponent grab my hand, I have to let it go. Go on top, and I'm gonna do the same grip, the hope grip, on my opponent's wrist, all right? So, let's see now, my opponent's grab my hand here to defend, my opponent grab my hands. My opponent do the same grip as me, but here I have so much space to pull my hand out, and I can break my opponent's grip easier, all right? It's different than my opponent's because my legs and my chest is blocking my opponent's elbow to break my grip, all right? So if my opponent's grab my, my wrist, I'm gonna bring all the way down, and I come back really fast, and I go on top. If my opponent try to break my grip, I go again, grab, and I grab my opponent. And that's the most successful grip for you have on the back control, the straight jacket, where I can have fully control of my opponent's body here, my opponent top body, all right? So, always, you want to grab this grip here, all right? I always go to the straight jacket and I promise you for you, you can have more time and save more energy on the back control. All right, so let's save this position here and now let's go to the underhook side, okay? So, 
I teach you how to do standing just because it's easy for you seeing the camera. But it's actually you're gonna drill this on your side. So I have my underhook side, I'm going to the underhook side, and I go do the repulsive mount, all right? So my leg, go my opponent's, my opponent's hips, and I'm gonna pull my toes up. And I have here the knuckle line, okay, my grip. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do everything again. Let's go to the straight jacket, uh, straight jacket. I'm gonna push my opponent's arm all the way down, switch, grab my opponent's, or my opponent's wrist, Depend on the reaction of my opponents. If my opponent defends my hard neck, I just go on top and I grab on top, all right? Straight jacket. If after I grab this hand here, my opponent decides to grab my wrist to defend itself, I will break all the way, go faster on top, grab my opponent's arm, and of course, if my opponent tries to break my grip, go on top, and now finally, I have the straight jacket, all right? So guys, Remember I tell you why I go to the other hook side? That's the, that's the most important part here. I'm gonna trap my opponent's arm with my leg. So, because I'm using my uh, on the hook side, I'm on top there, I can push this leg all the way down, and with this angle here, it's gonna be way easier for I grab my opponent's arm here. Usually I like to do this position here, so. I, if you're flexible enough and your opponents have a long arms, you can do this really easy. I pass my, my foot under and I point my toes up, and here I isolate my opponent's arm, right? So here I'm squeezing my opponents with my leg, and now I have one last defense for my opponent. My opponent don't have the arm anymore, and also too, I can hold my opponents way better on the back control. Why I say this? Before I learn everything on the John Dernher instructional, I always struggle to pass this leg here, I do whatever, my opponent was defending here and I was push my opponent's arm down to grab this arm. But with the system, with the simple motion, if I push my opponent's arm all the way down, down is better, pass my leg and do this position here, the things change, I have a, a game change on back control over here. So this simple motion to grab the hope grip push all the way down, pass on top, grab here, and go all the way to the other side, change my game, all right? And this probably is the most value thing on the instructional. Now guys, what are you gonna do here? I still have this arm, and I have to choke my opponent, so what are you gonna do? I will switch my grip again, so I go back to the knuckle line, all right? And here, I'm not gonna go all the details for how you penetrate the opponent's neck because I want you to watch the instructional to you. Here is the most I like it on the instructional. I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna teach you everything, all right? So here, after I have the arm, the, the, the arm trap, after I hold my opponent's arm, it's gonna be way easy, or for I go to my choke, or if I'm doing gi, it's gonna be way easy to I grab the gi and I choke my opponent's with one arm. All right, so that is what I'm most like on the instruction. While this technique here, this step, the system to choke upon it by the back, what the most like. All right, so I'm gonna teach you other things and keeping here for you learning, but that's the most important so far. So guys, now let's go to the banana split part. Uh, I learned banana split a long time ago when I was a teenager, and I always applied the, the simple way to, just to uh, try to spread the legs apart of my opponents, and that's really valuable, but uh, I learned new stuff, and I'm not gonna teach everything I learned in that, I'm gonna skip for something, because again, I want you to watch the instructionals, uh, I just give you again, just what I like, right? So, uh, let's see a different way for what I learned to get the button in the split, have a different ways you can go for the tour position or for any other positions you have the opportunity, but let's go here for the position, I never see it and I like to train, okay? So. What is going to happen here? My opponent is going to pose on top of me, so my catcher is going to push my leg on the ground and I'm going to be on her feet, all right? What am I going to do? I will set up my wand and my hooks underneath my opponent's hamstring, all right? And I use this one here to bump my opponent a little bit more over me. What am I going to do here, guys? This leg I have now on the hook, I go under my opponent's leg, I'm going to straight, and here I will lock a finger forth, all right, so let's go one more time. I will 
Go underneath my opponent's knee, push my opponent a little bit higher. I don't want my opponent to be on top of my hips like they was before. Catherine is actually a little bit sideways of me now because I push her. What are you gonna do? Go down, Inside, uh, set up my leg underneath my opponent's leg, and here I will lock my leg, right? And here, guys, I don't leave Catherine's leg like I'm really free, and actually, I need to put a lot of pressure on my opponent's leg, right? Now, what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna sweep the transition here, forget my opponent, right? So, I will hold my opponent's arm, let go of my underhook, grab my opponent's leg, and here, I'm gonna bring my opponents up. And how I do this? I simply lift my leg up and still pressure with my opponent's leg. I will grab my opponent's chin before I let it go. My grip on the arm. And here, I can go for the bone and the split. All right? So, the bone and the split, I just want to grab and wipe my opponent's leg uh, to get the bone and the split. One important thing, I never gonna do what? I never will grab over here, all right? I never want you to have this, leg, this arm under, uh, underneath my opponent and swing wide because my opponent can grab my arm and give me an arm bar. So now let's go to the heel hook and this is what I'm most like, all right? So how am I gonna do it? I'm still holding my opponent's foot and I don't, I don't want you to go to the banana split anymore. And what am I gonna do it? I will bring this leg, this, uh, this leg a little bit to the other side and I will hold here. Hold my opponent's toes just to be on the front of me. Pass my hand all the way to the other side. My other hand, grab my hand. And here, I will twist my, toe, my opponent's toes to my opponent's head. So the direction I want to push my opponent's toes is for my opponent's toes go to her head. And because I have this extra leverage, for example, I'm here to try to apply. What I'm gonna do, grab. Pass to the side, grab one more time, and this hand is the other leverage I need to do. So my hand go underneath her heels, all the way to the, her toes, grab, reinforce my grip. And here, I'm gonna do it, this motion, to grab my heel hook, all right? Have a, a straight foot lock, have all the ones, but the heel hook is the most I like it for applying for my banana split, all right? So now guys, uh, keeping on the banana split, I'm gonna teach a Kimura, exactly. That's totally new for me and I love to see it and I, know, uh, I love it, how to apply it, okay? And it's not, actually it's not too hard, but it's gonna be a little bit harder for a record for you, so I'm gonna try to do my best to explain for you, all right? So let's go back here for the, for the banana split position. Catherine's gonna pose on me. I'm gonna take her heel, her leg, push, grab her leg, lock my finger forth, and here you go, all right? So let's try to move a little bit here more for you can see. I'm gonna do Kimura on this arm, on this arm or for her, her side, all right? So I keep my hook on my opponent's leg all the time. What I'm gonna do, I will switch my grip. This grip on my opponent's wrist is really important, all right? So grab this wrist before you go anywhere. So I will let it go and I will grab my opponent's for arm on this position, I think. If I switch it here, you can see better. So keep the hook, and I go to this position over here. What I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go out, and I'm gonna go on my elbow, all right? I will grab her wrist, and I will push all the way down. My other hand, I will set up under and inside of her arm pit, with my front arm on top of her wrist. I don't her teach her one way to do it, but I think it's better when you have this position here, you go right away for this grip over here, all right? So after I have this grip over here, I'm gonna lay down just to this arm don't go nowhere. So my shoulder actually block my opponent's hand to go, all right? So when I come up, I slide my hand and then I'm going to the ground. And here guys, I have my Kimura. What I had to do is uh, pull my opponent's shoulder down and with my forearm, I want to slide my opponent's hand out over here to grab my Kimura. And this, this I like it wise because it's really surprising my opponents. I never see no one expecting 
doing this in jiu-jitsu. Maybe I, the camera didn't take care of everything, so let me go a little bit down. So, after I get my hooks, of course, I can go here for my man split, but I need this arm. What I'm gonna do? Grab this hand, this hand, I set, introduce, I penetrate underneath my opponent's on the pit. I grab here on the hook tricep or on her shoulder, doesn't matter. I just have to lift my opponent's shoulder and with my elbow, push my opponent's hand all the way down, all the way to the side. Basically, I want to do this position here with her arm, but with more pressure to get my Kimura. Alright, guys? So guys, that's what I'm most like on the John Dern and her back attack system instructional. Uh, I hope i be helpful for you and teach you something. But the instructional is way more than this. They have a, way more on the torque position, way more on the chokes and way, arm, and way more how to trap the arm. Also in they have a way more on the torque position, but that's what I think was the most valuable for me and what I really learned on the instructional. I really recommend you get the instructional. I'm gonna leave the link here for the instructional for you think you can see on the BJJ Fanatics. And guys, if you're looking for any rash guards or gear or any jiu-jitsu gear, please go to fanlinksfc.com and don't forget to get the uh, our coupon has there to get some discount for you. Alright guys, I hope you like. Please don't forget to leave a like, subscribe here on the channel, and also to please let me know if you like the what I learned on the instructional here video. Alright guys, so thanks so much and I see you on the next video.